second day of the conference, uh, Making Learning Ecosystem Smarter. We have uh, a very interesting line of, uh, of presentation, one full paper, two short paper, and one flash communication. I will try to be strict with the time. So I will, if I start <laughs> waving at you, you know that uh, you are, uh, your time is uh, is approaching the, the end. So we start with uh, Jordi Mogas Recalde that will present uh, Classroom Lightning and its effect on student learning and performance towards a smarter condition. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much uh, for us doing this presentation. I am trying to, to share my screen. Can you see it? I think so. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, uh, we are Dr. Matas and Roma Palau from Arget Research Group at the Universitat Rovira i Virgili in Catalonia. And we are going to present uh, this paper that we sent, which is a, a systematic literature review, as you will see. So before to start, I would like to, to contextualize uh, our work in the smart learning environment because uh, a smart learning environment, uh, well, as there are several, uh, several definitions that you might propose, but we like to, to retrieve this one from Rob Copper, which says that it is an environment or space which must be enriched with digital adaptive and environmentally aware devices in order to promote faster and better learning. So uh, this definition is from 2014, but it's quite actual. And we also like to, to remember that it's not only for faster and better learning, but also to promote or to give better uh, conditions for teaching, right? But uh, yeah, actually uh, learning, uh, we have discussed in this conference also, uh, nowadays is ubiquitous, which means that it happens anywhere, everywhere, with, any, with anyone. So the concept of learning is broadening its, its traditional sense. But for us, it was important to establish how it happens in a specific place, which is the classroom. Because at the end, uh, learners mainly through the formal learning, so learning classrooms. and the smart learning environment applied to a, a classroom uh, takes a lot, of, a lot of characteristics that apply also, like personalization, inclusion, flexibility, sustainability. These are some characteristics that must exist in a classroom to be smart, and also technology, of course. But from our work, we differentiate three different dimensions of smart classrooms. In a smart classroom, there must coexist technology, the environment, and all of this helps uh, to processes. So through technology, from the most basic, most basic uh, devices or like laptops or blackboards or whatever, to the most cutting edge technology like, uh, for instance, artificial intelligence or internet of things and so on. So we can help processes to happen in classroom for learners to learn better and faster. But for us, it's very important to take into consideration also the, the second dimension or one of the three dimensions, which is the environment. And this includes from architecture so to some environmental factors that happen in the classroom itself, like for instance, temperature, humidity, lighting, air quality, and so on. And in this communication, so we will focus on lighting. From this conceptualization, uh, we wanted through this work, which is a systematic literature review, we wanted to study how lighting factors intervene in learning processes, specifically in the, in the classroom, and we did so with, with an A to the smart classroom concept to understand how it happens. And so we posed initially two different research questions. The first one was 
what aspects of classroom lighting have studies focused on? And the second one is how factors of classroom lighting influence on learning processes. Okay, so from these two different research questions, we did a systematic literature review, you know which is the process. Uh, in this point, I will say that we, we decided to do the systematic literature review into do two different databases, which are Web of Science and Scopus, because for us, uh, and from previous works, uh, we stated that these are enough for educational science and, and, and well, good enough to retrieve significant literature. And, and well, so we did the process in Web of Science and Scopus in light of, of understanding how lighting should be controlled in a smart classroom. And to do the retrieval of papers, we used three different combinations of keywords. The first one, it was lighting and learning processes. The second one, lighting and learning environment. The third one, classroom lighting. And from this, we got uh, a number of papers that, um, well, if you see the, 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 the total counting of this retrieval, you might think, well, this is not significant for our purpose, but you can see that, for instance, in Web of Science, we retrieved a lot of papers, so almost 3,000, but the eligible ones, the, the ones which from reading the title were meaningful for our study, were just around 100. So we can think that maybe there was um, too much noise on the retrieval, and it could be due to the, the keywords we used. But actually in Scopus it didn't happen because uh, while in Web of Science we retrieved uh, at the end just the 3% of papers, uh, we, we took into consideration the 3% of the retrieved ones. So in Scopus it was almost the 25%. Anyway, the fact is that we followed a systematic process and from this process we finally chose 130 papers. This is because from the 194 that you have seen here, so we have we had to discard some due to uh, issues like they were duplicates, duplicates uh, because they appeared in different databases or different searches. Uh, they were written in when we downloaded them. We saw that they were written in, in different languages that we were not able to understand, like Korean. And, and well, uh, I have to say also that, uh, the, that the data retrieval was narrowed to the last 10 years, so we just retrieved from 2009. Well, this was the process. And from the abstract reading of the different papers, the 130, we concluded that uh, there was a classification of the aspects of classroom lighting that papers or, or authors normally deal with when studying lighting in classroom settings. And these were automation, student comfort, sustainability, technical issues, space design, and, and the impact of health. Uh, I have to say also that mm, some papers, it, it seems quite obvious that some papers didn't focus just on one but they combined some of the of these aspects for instance automation and technical issues are very close so in some papers they appeared simultaneously but anyway we tried to identify which was the the main focus of every 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 paper so this was the classification we we did and from here uh, I should highlight that the cognitive process processes is the most meaningful for us because it was going to to answer the second research question. That was which classroom lighting and cognitive which classroom lighting uh, affect or how affects in cognitive processes. So regarding the cognitive processes, 
uh, from our narrative method uh, analysis of the paper retreat, which were from Cognitive Processes 18. And here I, I will add something. And it's that if you remember our research question, it was aimed to, to determine how classroom lighting affects learning processes. But when we did the literature review, we realized that uh, learning processes are not always uh, studied in the papers, but cognitive processes, it was more broad and it fit also in our research. So we consider it cognitive processes. For learning processes, uh, we can relate, for instance, here you can read academic achievement and some others, but it was really not not very depth on the on the retrieval. So we brought it to cognitive processes such concentration, attention, and so on. And we also saw that uh, lighting in classrooms affects in, in many other aspects like productivity, visual pleasantness, or comfort, and so on. Uh, in most of the studies we retrieved, it had a positive effect. So adapting lighting settings to the classroom, it had a, a positive effect on learning in some sort of way, like, like you can see here. And only in one of the papers, uh, the authors concluded that there was not effect. Anyway, so we studied the cognitive processes, as you can see here, but uh, you might ask yourselves about uh, how classroom lighting can affect on these cognitive processes. So from this literature review, we also concluded that there are three main issues to consider more technical to adapt classroom lighting on the, co well, uh, to improve cognitive processes and so on. And these are that uh, LED lighting is the most commonly used. There are several studies that say that uh, they compared learning with LED lighting and fluorescent lighting, and it was clear or statistically significant that with LED lighting, the performance of learners was better. So one of the technical issues is that for classroom lighting, it's better LED lighting. And then uh, we also saw that in the studies, because we are narrowing to the studies we retrieved, there are two other elements or parameters to be considered in classroom lighting. One of them is intensity, and the other one is the cor correlated color temperature. The intensity is studied sometimes, but not that much, whereas correlated color temperature is very common to be adapted in, in a classroom setting. I don't know if you are familiar with correlated color temperature, but uh, here you have an example. This is from Another study we did from our uh, starting from our literature review. So we went further to study how really uh, the different color temperatures affect on learning. And the same as the literature, we concluded that in, in a classroom, according to the, the, the activity the learner are performing, so it's better one or the other. For instance, the warmer color which is at the left it's better for creative thinking whereas the the warm oh, sorry the the cold one in the right it's better for for attention concentration and so on so uh, from all of this i will conclude that uh, led lighting appears to be uh, very accepted in the in the literature as the best option but then uh, looking for other uh, parameters to be controlled, correlated color temperature, I, I didn't mention, but actually it, there are some studies that uh, prove empirically that a uh, colder color temperature is better for attention. But the other way around, this is, uh, and this is the reason to do the experiment I, I showed you before, with warm color temperature, there is not uh, enough uh, work to prove that it works for other types of activities. 
Anyway, the fact is that some of the authors say that color temperature is important to be taken into account and to regulate. So there are some authors that propose a dynamic lighting system to control this color temperature, but they do so through a, a manual system. So it's the teacher who have to adapt if they want a color, a warmer color or a, a colder one. And uh, there are many papers also that talk about autom automation in many senses, and this would work also for dynamic lighting, but it's not really developed, at least for what we have seen until now. I would like to mention also that daylight and artificial light is another thing that is like a controversy in the literature because there is not agreement whether it's better one or the other, but it seems that combining both uh, could be ideal. Although with artificial lighting, it's good in, in a smart classroom, it could be most suitable or we can control better. So, and to conclude, I will say that we state that there are two main future research uh, that we would like to highlight. One is about dynamic lighting. Uh, it's needed to, to do more research on how it impacts in learning, in learning processes or in cognitive processes. And on the other hand, uh, there is need of more uh, research or implementation of systems uh, to, to see how uh, automation could be implemented in a smart classroom to, to help uh, on this, on better learning and, and faster learning and also uh, to help having uh, better teacher conditions. So the presentation was this. Maybe you have some question to pose. We will be happy to answer you. Thank you very much. So first, uh, we it's a virtual clap for, uh, for you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, you stay in time, so we have time for a few questions. If uh, there is any question from uh, the audience, uh, we can, uh, nobody is uh, raising their hand, uh, as I can see, or uh, if you also want to write in the, in the chat. Uh, so in the meanwhile, maybe I would like you to ask a question. Uh, I'm thinking whether uh, studies show if there is an individual response to light, uh, or is something more uh, universal uh, in a way? Because I'm thinking a classroom is uh, a place uh, shared by many people with also different role. So can we imagine uh, to find an optimal solution? How do we take into account individual uh, preferences, well, if there are any? Actually, in the concept of smart classroom, we, we really believe that individualization and personalization of all the aspects affecting each individual uh, would be the, the ideal scenario. But the fact is that, well, at least uh, for what we have seen until now, regarding the lighting, uh, there are not studies uh, focusing on, on the individuals. It's just... Uh, understanding how lighting affects to the collective and yeah maybe there could be different response from one individual to the other but yeah the studies uh, look for the the generalization so yeah it's uh, if you if you let me let me say something about uh, your question could could be in in, in, in to the uh, could go ahead into directions uh, probably the characteristics of, 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 the, of the person uh, that in fact we haven't seen anything about. Probably uh, we should uh, find, we could find something in probably disabilities concerning uh, vision or, or something like that. Or uh, probably in a kind of students that they have uh, behavior, uh, behavioral problems. That uh, we have seen 
is uh, different kind of activities, and is the the the, the image that uh, we show you uh, that. Uh, for different kind of activities is discovered that uh, we need different kind of light and uh, of course it's not a personalization of the individual but in uh, in the future classrooms uh, probably we will we will have at the same time different kind of activities i mean in the same scenario in the same classroom we will need different kind of lighting because maybe in one corner the students will be reading in another uh, corner, they will be thinking or talking, or maybe will be, will, they will be uh, uh, watching a video. I mean, for different kind of activities, we need different lighting. Is that the reason that we think that um, uh, smart classrooms and this uh, uh, automation and the, the dynamic lighting uh, uh, should be divided in, uh, at least in areas and kind of activities. Thank you very much. Is there a, any additional question? And be advices so, as well, not only questions. There is a, Oscar as a question. Do you relate light, color, energy, emotion? Uh, yes, maybe in, in line. Thank you, Monica. Um, and congratulations for your work. It's not uh, very common to, to see research on light and it's extremely needed in very very different aspects of our life uh, so congratulations and thank you for your work uh, one of the things that i was uh, was occurring occurring with monica's question and what you were now saying is uh, there's a lot of studies relating of course uh, color and emotion and light has a direct uh, direct relation with energy and color and at the individual level, we know, uh, of course, the physiological uh, consequences uh, related with ergonomics uh, that we have for some years already. But the color uh, issues, it's something that is still state of the art. And knowing that, of course, there's a direct relation of color with energy and, of course, light, uh, uh, have you uh, gone in this direction or do you have any information or 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 results on on related with this sorry do you want to ans answer fast uh, f uh, first and, and later si vols contar tu Oh, okay, uh, it's it's interesting because in this paper uh, or uh, in this work we we have work only in uh, or directly lighting, and uh, another part of our work is uh, uh, touching or the, or working in uh, all the variables that we have in a, in an environment. And another one is the the color, and uh, you know that lighting it's only affecting directly. Um, uh, the, the work of the student, but uh, for uh, um, um, how to or uh, thinking about uh, the feelings of the student, uh, we should correlate it with the color because the same color is not uh, uh, is not appearing the same way depending on the color of, of the walls. In this right. in this in this work, we we just uh, uh, touch the topic of lighting. And we are working on another one about uh, acoustics and another one about the color of, uh, of uh, walls or furniture, how the light affects the students through of, uh, you know, it's called this value um, a candela. Yeah. Uh, can candela yeah. is the way to measure, uh, you know, probably better than us. No, no, not better than less. It's just a variable. Yes, it's a standard. But if, if you let me, uh, Monica, I'm not, I, if I am out of the time, just let me know. I would like to tell you that uh, for our papers, it's really difficult to, to find journals and reviewers. We had really, uh, really, uh, really uh, hard problems to, because we sent some papers to uh, some journals and the editor, oh, the paper is really nice, but I don't have any reviewer for uh, for uh, but, your paper. Yeah, industry, because, because we are in the field of education. But industry has a lot of research in this area. Uh, in 87, when I worked in Philips at Eindhoven, as you know, Philips is a leader in lighting yeah. market. And Philips has a lot of studies <laughs> related with light. Maybe you should do a, 
a kind of some mobility program inside one of these giants that uh, surely have a lot of information related with lighting. And it's interesting to bring it out because it should be a little bit more public than, than what it is. It's difficult to get information on that, yes. Yeah, and we are aware about Philips, and Philips also proposes uh, different settings for of correlated color temperatures and so for for classrooms, but we really don't find uh, any research published. No, so you won't. they are doing. <laughs> You'll have to go inside to learn with them. As well. I think no, that now okay. I have to stop you because uh, it's a very interesting uh, presentation, but we have to go on, go on. <laughs> and I'm sure that you may take. Uh, the occasion to continue the discussion in the coffee or lunch break.